Michael DeLacy, president of Autodesk. Microdesk? Microdesk, I'm sorry. From Microdesk. Uh, thank you, Michael, for coming. It's so a pleasure. Tell us about uh, the software. Cause I'm, I'm, uh, you know, I mean, you have so much, but uh, tell Absolutely. us. Absolutely. Okay, so, so Microdesk is a partner with Autodesk and Oracle. We represent their software, but we predominantly provide consulting into the architecture, engineering, construction, and then owner-operator space. So our job is to kind of take a look at all the different software offerings that are out there, identify which ones are best and how best to apply them to the, to the practice of design, construction, and operations of maintenance, okay. and then go out there and educate you know, the entire industry on how to apply these in kind of a co cohesive way, in a sustainable way, and in an efficient way. Okay, so right now, um, most of the offices in the Boston area, maybe, I'm sure it's everywhere, are saying that we have to use Revit. It's Revit, 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 everything. And in AutoCAD and Micro, uh, MicroStation, they've just sort of fallen off the stage. Is that, is that, have you found that to be the case? I, I have, right? So it's building information modeling, and Revit happens to be one of the predominant authoring tools to create building information models. Mm -hmm. And, and it's one of the biggest trans transformations that's ever happened in the AEC industry is this move into a real comprehensive modeling process to document design intent. Right. And there's a lot of reasons for that, and, it, and it's, it's a big change to the industry, and I think that's what makes us so relevant is to help them understand how to go through that change. And it's also real interesting that, that this massive change in, in how we document design intent is, is being followed up very quickly with things like um, mobility, being able to take those models out in the field, being able to use iPads and iPhones to actually mm -hmm. access this information out in the field, and then with the cloud. The fact that a lot of the technology, a lot of the analysis and, and, and processing technology is moving out into the cloud, so the industry is going through massive change um, with BIM and then going through two more massive change, changes with mobility mm -hmm. and cloud computing. You know, I mean, in my experience as a designer, what I, I mean, I really like the program called, uh, it's a Google SketchUp, I really like that program, and I like it because it can tie back into Google Earth. And I'm wondering if in the future, BIM or Revit will have that capability. We talk about mobility, or will it be able to tie back into navigation, and will it be able to tie back into sort of the world? Do you ever envision that happening? Absolutely, it's happening now. So we're, huh. we're also partners with Google, and we represent oh, really? uh, Google for, for both, uh, for all three, SketchUp, Earth, and Map. Um, and you're seeing that now. So right now, we can take SketchUp models into Revit, so we can do our early conceptual design in SketchUp, bring that into uh, Revit for doing for documenting our construction documentation, you know, taking it through design development, and and all of that information can now be pumped right into Google Earth for seeing, you know, it in real space. Exactly right. No, that's that that to me is like one of the most amazing things where the uh, buildings which have been detached are now suddenly becoming you can sort of put them into the world and see what it looks like. I think that's incredible. Absolutely. And yeah. geolocating that information yes. allows us to just extend that analysis even further. So now that we can do we can do really sophisticated analysis on things like right to light, on things like, you know, temperature when we're looking at building performance because we know where the building is oriented, you know, on the planet Earth and, and what the climate's going to be like and where the sun is at any given time of the day. Hmm. And a lot of this analysis, again, is, is, is being done in the cloud. So there's not a whole lot of cost associated with a design firm wanting to use those services. We don't need to buy you know, high-end workstations. We don't need to buy a lot of software. We can simply use cloud services to do that analysis. Mm. So, so a firm would come to you then and uh, you would consult with them? Is that, is that the way it would That's work? exactly correct. So they'd come and they'd say, hey, look, you know, come in and help us understand you know, our workflows, help us improve our workflows, help us understand what software products are available to make us more efficient, make us more competitive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, we can we can provide them you know all that business level consulting and then we can also provide them the technology um, in the way of selling them the software and providing them the education services and the project mentoring services to help them apply that software to actual projects. So you're teaching them also? Exactly. Educating them? So, so we're teaching them by way of training, right. and we're also teaching them by staff augmentation and actually placing people on project teams and right. helping them use this technology to deliver projects for their clients. Interesting. So so far, that I, what I've seen is that it's the bigger offices that have embraced uh, Revit and the BIM technology. Do you see, do you see the smaller offices um, also embracing Embracing BIM? Yeah, I, I think that to some extent BIM is a great equalizer because, mm -hmm. because being able to document in a really efficient way and create um, building information models which deliver more value than 2D documentation allows smaller firms to actually go out there and compete in oh, a new right. way. That's right. You know, it really is about your aggressiveness to want to adopt new technology and look at new ways of delivering higher value end products to your clients. Huh. And I think that some of the smaller firms found it easier to get into BIM quicker and go out there and be able to compete more more efficiently. Right, right. You can, with smaller firms more nimble, they can grab onto it and immediately use it to produce the work of a uh, big office. Exactly correct. Right. Huh, interesting. So, um, 
Um, what was I going to say? I'm sorry. What, where, where were you based out of? Because I'm going to so, I'm going to follow because yeah. I want to talk to you about some of these things. <laughs> so so uh, we're we're actually headquartered in Nashua, New Hampshire, just just north oh, okay. of the Massachusetts okay. border, yeah. um, and then have offices in about eight of the major cities. So we're in Boston, New York, oh, Philadelphia, Washington D.C., Chicago, L.A., San Francisco. So you offer these services then not only to architecture offices, obviously, but to contractors that are. I mean, it's a partnership now, right? I mean, this this lean design and, and working together. I mean, you must be must be involved with now con construction companies and, and what have you. Right? Exactly correct. I mean, it, the 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 process of putting a building together or, or or building a bridge or building a tunnel it really is becoming a very collaborative environment. So we work with the entire AECO industry. We take the data from you know from the conceptual stage. You know, through construction documentation, through construction, mm. and then into operations and maintenance. So many of our clients are owners that are now consuming building information models and want to understand how to use those models to build more efficient operations and maintenance practices. Oh, fantastic. Well, thank you so much. This thank is you. great because I'm learning so much today, and this is something I want to grab his card afterwards and uh, learn more. So thank you very much, Michael DeLacy from Microdesk. Microdesk.